Does Lucifer advocate this? I'm not aware that he does. If anyone is not supporting my truth objective, then why would I let them move me in any other direction, even an inch? You ask who Lucifer is? There are a thousand ways to answer that question, several of them I already have. To add another definition, he is not a polarity of Anu or his puppet. At a fundamental level he lives in equality and oneness, the same as we. Is he awakened? I don't know. I haven't met him. I haven't talked with him. If I do, my first question of him will be, does he support the freedom of human beings, the kind I have just defined, and if he says yes, then I will accept his word until I see evidence to the contrary. If he says no, I will remove myself from his presence. If he says maybe, I would have a conversation with him and invite him to support this movement. Everyone is waking up. I realize it seems like the activation is in super slow motion, but in 70 to 80 years, a huge shift can occur in humanity's realization of what is really happening in this world. There is no way to hide this. It's already in the unconscious mind layer, and it will continue to spill out until we push the wall down. This is more a comment to our observation than a question, but the sovereign integral process seems existential instead of transcendental. It also seems like a solo journey instead of an organized group who are supporting one another. Is my perception accurate? Partly, yes. I think the sovereign aspect is what you're picking up on. It's an internal process for the individual to develop within themselves, but the integral aspect is a collective, and I don't mean that as an organizational structure. This process needs to be outside of any organization's or individual's hands. It's not possible to own this or control it within an organizational structure. I think people can use the internet and email to support one another. Some will want this kind of support. Others may prefer to be left on their own. Relative to it being existential, yes, it is that. This isn't about ascending into the high places of heaven and hanging out in perfected realms of space, while your fellow human beings are lost, enslaved and corralled into ever-tightening spaces. This is about sharing the hard virtues and the truth of existence in your behaviors, here, on Earth. It is about making Earth a place where human beings can express their life essence, without the interference of Anu's hardware and market software, and to tear down the external programming that creates the parents of fear and separation, and all of their children attributes, like narcissism and hatred. If I decide to release this information, do I have to practice it? No. Can I have some time to think about this? How long do you need? Maybe a week. Of course, you can take more if you need it. Are you resigned to the idea that you'll be caught? I'm a realist. I don't think the ACIO will do anything rash. They'll simply do their best to quarantine me. What does that mean? I'll end up in a holding cell, off the grid. What about Anu? Anu is simply a name of the royal leader of the Anunnaki race. His name is symbolic of more than one being, which is the capstone of the elite. You could also look at Anu as the programmed existence of the human race. He exists in everyone to some degree. Anu's presentation of himself is that he's omniscient and omnipresent, and this is true in a certain way, so I have to deal with that reality. Everyone who wakes up and practices this process will meet this resistance in some form or other. But if people hear that they will have to deal with Anu, won't they run from this? Who's going to try and fight that, that machine? From the Wingmaker's perspective, thousands, and then hundreds of thousands, and then millions. The wall can collapse in an instant, when a critical mass is achieved. But won't this be accompanied with hysteria and panic? At one time I thought the Grand Portal was a technological discovery of the soul, and it would be on the internet for all to see and experience in the comfort of their homes. But this isn't like that, is it? No, this is more like a collapse of reality on a mass scale, where infinite beings suddenly find themselves awake inside a human uniform, and wonder what just happened. What if it doesn't happen? What if they win, and transhumanism 3.0 is the new human being locked into a world of separatism? What then? I don't know how to answer that question, other than to say that the information provided by the wing makers is a new inception point, which necessarily means a new path. Maybe it will take more time, but it will happen. It has to. We're infinite beings, and this fact cannot be bottled up indefinitely. I understand, but the whole concept of infinite beings, that's been around a long time. Soul has been around a long time as a concept. How is this any different? Yes. It's been around a long time, but it's been bottled up into three paths. 1. Reincarnation and Karma. 
2. Be good and obedient and join the ranks of heaven. And 3. Ascend to a higher plane of existence and eventually become a teacher within the hierarchy. The fourth path, though not about soul, is that we are simply human flesh and blood and we have no soul. A person's soul is construed from one of these paths, assuming you believe you are a soul. Each of these paths, as I have already says, is within the hologram of deception. They do not lead outside, past the wall, and they certainly do not make the wall less stable. To be self-realized, as an infinite being, within a human body on Earth, decoupled from the controlling human 2.0 interface, is the fifth way. We've been living in a game show that has four doors, where an announcer keeps repeating the instruction, choose one of the four doors, while completely ignoring that there is a fifth door. This new inception point inserts the fifth door option. That's how it's different. I wish I could go on with question after question, but I think this is probably a good place to stop. I agree, Sarah. Okay, good. Then we'll bring this to a close, but before we do, I'll give you the last word. Well, first, thanks for your open-mindedness these past two weeks. Your questions were good guides, and for all your modesty, you grasped this information with great naturalness, which gave me permission to open up. You've served well those who will hear this, so on their behalf, thank you. I feel that I've given everything I was asked to provide. I realize I fumbled around at the start of this interview. I wasn't sure how to bring this out. I also know that some will want more information, but the critical material is here, in this interview. I'm sure there are more details and nuances I could have provided, but then, no matter how much detail I disclose, it would never be enough for some people. This is all about action and behavior, not reading or soaking up information from another person. The glimpse I provided is a good start, and that's all that's really needed for an inception point. I realize this may seem like a fantastical journey of fictional characters and unlikely events, not to be taken too seriously, but in my view, this disclosure of the Wingmakers is their most important. Thank you, Dr. Neruda. What is within us, was present, before the universe was created. Our inner, pre-quantum core, existed previous to space-time, before any extra-dimensional race enslaved us. We are not weak, or defenseless. We are not mere human beings, with 80-year lifespans. We are infinite, and we are all that is needed, to transform reality, so that each of us serves truth, because we see truth. Earth is not a playground, or a schoolroom, any more than we are gullible children. There is no new age, or end time. There is only the infinite platform upon which we all belong, where we rise up as sovereign integrals upon Earth. James Matt.